I am Leonard Jack Jr. I'm currently president of SOFI uh, for the Society of Public Health Education and I became president effective about 50 minutes ago. In my day job, I am editor-in-chief of CDC's journal Preventing Chronic Disease and the National Center for Chronic Disease Prevention and Health Promotion at CDC. And CDC has allowed me to serve in a volunteer capacity as president of SOFI. I was first introduced to SOFI my first year in my master's program, which was a few decades ago. Um, and I was encouraged to attend the SOFI conference by my mentor at the time, Colin Zarahimbua, who was also a past president of SOFI. And so every year, throughout my master's degree, when I was pursuing my PhD, I attended SOFI. And the wonderful thing about attending SOFI is, first of all, the people here are super friendly. And there was a concerted effort to really get students engaged. And so you saw a place for yourself in, in the organization. You saw a place uh, even in leadership at some point. And so for me, it is an absolute honor to now circle back and be president of the society um, that just really embraced me when I first came on as a, a very, you know, emerging health professional. So I think the most valuable part of me being a member of SOFI um, has been having access to some of the world's best researchers and practitioners. So when you come to this conference, you see a very in-depth program, right? But you also have an opportunity to collaborate with these individuals. Once you hear about what they're doing, you can approach them and say, um, I would like to have some additional conversation. And the network that you create as a result of being here, for me, has been a network that I've maintained over my life. And I think also, Sophie has been extremely open to allowing you to get not only to the table but also to lead initiatives once you're at the table. Being a student, when you come on board early doing that, you can't help but develop confidence. You belong and you can't help but, you know, um, develop a sense that your voice will be heard. Sophie is one of the world's leading national organization when it comes to trying to find ways of improving the health of communities. And so where else would be a better place, right, than to be a member of SOFI and to get this kind of exposure? It's been, you know, I think really helpful in getting me to where I am professionally. But I think it comes down to the network that you develop at SOFI. And from that network, you have colleagues who have bought into the mission of SOFI, which is to improve the health of communities around the world we share similar experiences that we've had. We share successes that we've been able to, you know, bring about. We've shared uh, some opportunities and some failures, and we help each other to sort of think about how we can develop our professional areas of expertise. So I think it comes down the network that I've created, and it's very difficult to go to every conference, and so you have to make these real major decisions. And so for me, a big part of that is feeling a sense of belonging. And I think that SOFI um, co conference creates that not only during the conference um, time period, but in between. So it's that network for me. And one of the resources we make available to our members are the research journals and the practice journals. So those three journals are resources to all the members. Now, the beautiful, sweet thing about it is I once served as editor in chief of Health Emotion Practice. And so just all the journals providing the latest research and practice content to our members, I think is a plus. In addition to that, annually we have the Health Advocacy Summit, um, and we know that policy, right, plays a huge part in improving the conditions that help to either improve health or create conditions that certain communities experience poor health outcomes. SOFI is one of the few organizations that creates space once a year to actually train individuals on how to approach policy makers because policies shape how people uh, ultimately experience, um, live and thrive. That conference is annually, so that kind of training happens all the time. And then there are continuing education opportunities throughout the entire year on various different topics, webinars, seminars. There are lots of educational resources, textbooks that Sophie puts out. So there are all these different resources to help position health educators to do their job more effectively. 
I got interested in SOFI as a student. And I think the landscape of the work we're doing in public health education, behavior science, is evolving. And so SOFI over the years has led the way in what the field feels like, looks like today, and what it looks like tomorrow. And so SOFI has that role, right? We're bringing all of this talent some at the latter end of their career, some in the middle. But what I think is really exciting for Sophie is those that at the beginning of their professional careers, just introducing them to all the latest in the field in terms of uh, best practices in health education, health promotion, and behavior sciences, but then also asking them to be a part of helping to shape what that looks like moving forward. I think it's important for shaping Sophie's future. When we look at just the environment, the political landscape across the country, people are experiencing everyday life in different ways. And I think Sophie creates this atmosphere where the goal is to make sure that everyone feels like they're included, right? That they have a place in being a part of a very complex discussion around why are certain populations experiencing a heavier burden in certain health conditions than others. So there are reasons for that. And some of the reasons for that are access to certain services, um, living conditions, the political landscape, the will to help others. And so the people who come to the conference come from those settings. And so it's important to have an atmosphere where it is intentional that everyone feels that they are part of a community that supports one another and that these diverse experiences from that lived experience in the real world can then be represented in all of us who we come, how, when we come to the table here and we can all bring our unique training, our unique perspectives on how we go about trying to solve those problems and we can do it in a way that's respectful. We can do it in a way that is encouraging. We can do it in a way that doesn't lift one group, one race, one political perspective, one type of academic training, age group over another. And I think it takes intentionality to create that kind of culture and more so to, to really maintain that over time. But I think as a result of that, when people come, they see themselves having a place here. They see themselves being a part of a family of individuals who are not, we are not all the same, but the goal in the end is the same. And I think that when you talk to people who say they've attended 15, 16, 7 conferences, I think that was, that's what brings them back, because there are a lot of conferences that you can attend. But I think those are some of the tenets that can sort of explain why. I think the culture here is unique, um, inclusive, um, and supportive, and respectful, and that's one of the, uh, you know, some of the reasons why I believe people come back. I know that's the case for me.